Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super-creamed blend, presents... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect blendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. Two and two make four. But I have news for you. This does not apply if you happen to live with Irma Peterson. (laughs) Take the other day, Irma was in the kitchen holding a pan in her hand and doing cartwheels. So I said, Honey, what's the idea of doing cartwheels while you hold that pan? Well, the recipe says place ingredients in the pan and keep turning. give that a second thought, but at the present moment, there's no time for it. My employer, and uh, incidentally, the guy I love, has just phoned that he's coming over on a matter of great importance, and I can't imagine what it can be. Irma? Yes, Jane? What do you think Richard has on his mind? (laughs) What's the matter, sweetie? (laughs) You're crying. He's going to propose, and I'll be all alone with just Al. I'll have nobody. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> Honey, don't be ridiculous Oh, please, Jane, I've seen it coming The last two times Richard was here He had that dizzy look in his eyes That was only because you were engaging him in conversation <laughs> Irma, I refuse to let your imagination run away with the two of us Now, 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 that must be Richard Now, don't let him know that we were discussing anything personal I won't Okay Come in Hello, Jane Hello, Irma Hello, Richard Oh, Richard, we were just talking about you. Oh, me? Oh, it was nothing personal. We were just wondering if you came over to propose. Irma! (laughs) You know, Richard, you'll make a wonderful father. Irma, uh, will you please go in the kitchen and dry the dishes? But they're dry. Well, wet them and dry them over. (laughs) Uh, Irma, I have something personal that I'd like to discuss with Jane. Oh, I knew I was right. Something told me. I guess it's my feminine institution. (laughs) You'll just have to forgive this outburst, Richard. You understand Irma. No, no, I don't. But then again, who does? (laughs) Well, Jane, I've just been on the phone to Washington. You know that block of war surplus buildings that I discussed with you? Yeah. Well, the group that I represent feels that they'd make a wonderful recreation center for New York's underprivileged children. Oh, but, but Richard, don't you think other interests would want to grab them for commercial purposes? Yes, yes, that's the great danger. But if I can see Senator McLean in Washington tomorrow, I'm sure that we can swing this recreation project for the children before the others even know what's happening. Ah, you know, Richard, Irma was right. You would make a wonderful father. Well, that's an entirely different sort of project. (laughs) Uh, Jane, I'm leaving for Washington in the morning and just for the day, and I'd like you to come along. Oh, I'm practically packed. And I'll help you finish, Jane. Irma, were you listening at the door? Oh, Just when it's so important that my trip be kept a secret, too. Oh, I'll I'll keep it a secret. Oh, gee, Jane, I'd love to go to Washington. Oh, but, sweetie, this is a business trip. Oh, but I've never been to Washington. Everyone goes there. Even my graduating class went there. Why didn't you go? I didn't have anything to wear. Besides, I didn't graduate. (laughs) Oh, please, Richard, can't I go with you and Jane? Well, all right, Irma. I don't mind taking one extra along, and, well, seeing Washington might prove very educational for you. Oh, you're right, and I'll be able to see for myself the difference in the electricity down there. The difference in electricity? Yes, New York is AC, but Washington is DC. (laughs) Honey, that means District of Columbia. Listen, Irma, I I don't mind taking you along, but remember that this matter must be kept an absolute secret. This is what we call top-drawer stuff. Don't worry, I'll pack everything. (laughs) Uh, Jane, will you call American Airlines and then try to get reservations at the Statler Hotel for me? All right, Richard, I will. I'll see you later. Goodbye, girls. Bye, Richard. Goodbye. 
Oh, Jane, I'm so excited. Well, I'm glad, honey. But remember now, no one is to know that Richard is going to Washington. Oh, just have confidence in me, Jane. I, I think I'll get out my suitcase and pack. <laughs> Well, there stands Irma packing for her trip to Washington. Such packing you have never seen. She's using the bag that Al gave her for Christmas. Al says it's airplane luggage. To me, it looks like it was dropped from 10,000 feet. <laughs> now Irma's putting in the things she'll need. Now she's opening the bag and putting in the largest purse I have ever seen. I suppose that's because she's heard that in Washington, everyone passes the buck. <laughs> but now here's something I can't understand. Irma, why are you taking along your old x-ray pictures? Well, the doctor says I'm all right, but I still want to have them checked by the Secretary of the Interior. Oh. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Oh, girls, I'm so shaken. What an experience I just had. What happened? I was standing on the corner, and a gas station blew up. So I ran across the street. As soon as I got there, a great big electric sign falls down from the explosion. So I ran across to the other side. I'm no sooner on the sidewalk than one of the gas pumps comes down and just misses my head. So I ran to the next corner. Oh, that's dreadful. Was there a policeman around? Yeah, I got three tickets for jaywalking. <laughs> What a day. Irma, darling, what are you doing with that suitcase? I'm going to Washington with Jane and Richard. Oh, Irma, why must you broadcast everything? Washington? Janie, do you think it'd be possible for me to come along? Oh, well, Professor, this is a business trip, and well, I... I'll tell you what's on my mind. As you know, I have slowly been developing a liking for Mrs. O'Reilly. Yes, we know. We're thrilled about it. Yeah, but we still fight day and night. Now, I have heard that a different environment often makes a change in people. So I was thinking, since you're going to Washington, I would take Mrs. O'Reilly along. Of course, I realize the danger. I'm liable to walk her past the Smithsonian Institute and I'll never see her again. <laughs> well, Professor, I, I can't invite you to join us. You see, Richard's going on a highly confidential type of business and I, I just haven't the right to... Oh, I understand, Jenny. Have a nice trip, girls. Mrs. O'Reilly and I can wait. Someday I'll take her to the petrified forest. <laughs> Maybe there she'll look a little younger. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, Jane, I've almost finished packing. Oh, uh, uh, Jane, have you seen that large envelope Al left here? You mean that petition he sent weeks ago to his congressman? Yes, maybe while we're in Washington, we can get somebody interested in it. Irma, I have read that petition, and believe me, it has no chance. Congress will never raise the unemployment check to $300 a week. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Oh, Jane and I are getting ready to go to Washington with Richard tomorrow. Oh, Irma, I just got through telling you it's a secret, honey. Going to Washington, huh? Too bad you can't stick around in my moment of triumph. My greatest deal. Is it anything like your last one? You know, pumping up cranberries and selling them for apples? <laughs> no, sir. This one is a blessing to young lovers. A money-saving sofa. A money-saving sofa? Uh-huh. It's got a built-in mallet. And when you're sitting there with your girl, you step on a pedal, and the mallet knocks out her kid brother who's hiding there waiting to blackmail you for a quarter. <laughs> Great, huh, chicken? Uh, chicken, why do you look so depressed? Oh, well, I'm going to miss you when I'm in Washington. I'm going to miss you too, chicken. Don't like the idea of you being on the loose in Washington. In that confused state that you're always in, you're liable to wind up in some high government position. <laughs> good time if you're not with me. Feel the same way, chicken. Don't like it when you're away. Too much temptation for a young man when he's alone in this town. Pretty girls giving me the come on. I'm only human. How long can a guy stand in the corner tilting pinball machine? Now listen, the two of you. If all this is for my benefit, you're just wasting your time. 
This is a business trip, not a convention for the Lonely Hearts Club. Oh, but Jane, we won't be in your way. I know. I'll go with Al and the professor can take Miss O'Reilly. And we'll meet you when your business is finished. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Richard always stops at the Statler in Washington. You can meet us there at five. That's the spirit, Jane. And Irma, since I'm your escort, I want one thing understood. What, Al? As long as I'm taking you, I insist on paying my own way. <laughs> Irma... Do you ever get the feeling that you're running around with Diamond Jim Brady? <laughs> oh, Jane, you, you just don't see Al the way I do. I know he has no money or, or job or future, but I think for a failure he's very successful. <laughs> Thank you, chicken. Well, I'll break the good news to the professor, and I better start packing. What am I talking about packing? Everything I own, I'm wearing. <laughs> well, so long, chicken. See you later. Aren't you going to kiss me? Oh, okay, chicken. Here. Al, why do you always glance from side to side while you're kissing me? An old movie habit. Keep looking around for the usher. <laughs> well, see you later, chicken. Oh, gee, Jane, you're making so many people happy with this trip. Thanks, sweetie. But remember now, you're the only one who knows why Richard's going to Washington. And if anybody finds out, those kids will never have a recreation center. Oh, please, Jane, I won't say anything. You yourself have often said when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, honey, I'll pack as soon as I get back from the beauty parlor. I better hurry. See you, honey. Hello? Hello, my name is Stanley Adams of the International Press. I understand this is the home of Richard Rhineland's secretary. Are you she? She? No, I'm not she. This is me. <laughs> Irma Peterson. Oh, well, uh, could I speak to Miss Stacy? Well, she just went out. Uh, why don't you call when we come back from Washington? Oh, so you're going to Washington. With Mr. Rhinelander, I suppose? Look, don't pump me, because I'm not going to tell you about Senator McLean and the underprivileged children. Well, I guess there's nothing more to be said. Got to make the 9 o'clock edition. Goodbye. Goodbye. You'll have to get up early in the morning to fool me, and even then I'm not awake. <laughs> Say, ladies, did you know that you can tell a lot about a cake of soap just by feeling it? Well, you can. Sure, the next time, run your fingers over a cake of swan soap. Feel how it differs from other soaps. As Susie Swan says... Swan is really different. The feel of swan will tell you in a minute. Just feel a cake of swan and you will see that swan is different as can be. The reason, friend, it's super cream blend, says Susie. Yes, ladies, swan is the only soap that can give you this exclusive super creamed blend for your complexion care. And when you use Swan, you can tell there's a difference just by feeling that firm white cake. It feels smoother. And when you wash your face, when you smooth that luxurious Swan lather on your skin, you'll see that it feels different, too. Swan lather feels richer, creamier. Swan lather does an extra mild, extra thorough cleansing job on your skin. Yes, thanks to Swan's Super Creamed Blend, Swan cleanses so gently, then rinses away so completely, your face looks smoother, Fresher, younger. It's true, ladies, the swan look is a young look. Well, it's morning, and Richard and I have just arrived in Washington, and so far, so good. In a way, I'm happy that Irma and Al and the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly won't bother us for a few hours yet. I know I'd have a dreadful time explaining the sights of interest to Irma. I've already described the Lincoln Memorial to her. Despite everything I say, she still can't understand why Lincoln had to live in a log cabin when he had such a beautiful building available. <laughs> Hello. Yes? Well, my name is Miss Stacy. Uh, uh, yes, I'm Mr. Rhinelander's secretary. We're trying to contact Senator McLean. Uh, oh, well, well, I'll try again. No luck, Jane? Same story, Richard. I don't know what to think. 
Say, do you suppose someone else might have gotten to the senator before us? Oh, no, Richard, I don't see how. Irma's the only one who knows anything about it, and I'm sure she's kept it a secret. That is, I'm as sure as you ever can be about Irma. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Come in. Oh, no. It's the four of you. Yes, it's us, Jane. Hello, Jamie. Hiya, Rich. Hello, Al. Hello, folks. I thought you weren't to join us until 5 o'clock. Oh, but you didn't say a.m. or p.m., and we didn't want to be late. <laughs> Are, are you angry, Jane? Oh, no, honey, but Richard can't contact Senator McLean. Irma, are you sure you didn't tell anyone? Oh, you know me better than that. Well, there's one more contact I can try, a friend of my father's. I'll be back soon, Jane. Oh, Jane, we've been having such fun visiting the places of interest. Yeah, but not having much luck. Walked around the mint four times. The windows were open, but the wind was blowing the wrong way. <laughs> too bad, Al, and you couldn't get any samples. Just one of them breaks. Tell me, Jane, is Richard really having trouble contacting the senator? Oh, he's tried everything. Well, when you're in a spot like this, there's only one man to call. <laughs> Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al. Yeah, heard you were in Washington. How'd you do? No luck, huh? They won't make hijacking legal. <laughs> oh, Al, stop wasting time. Well, hold it, Jane. Never can tell. Uh, Joe... Got a problem. Want to contact a senator. Now, who of the Washington senators do you know? Who? Play second base. <laughs> no, Joe. Not them senators. The kind that don't play ball. <laughs> you know a Senator McLean? Oh, you don't? Oh, what's your hurry, Joe? You got a pose for the government? Oh, they're taking your fingerprints. <laughs> well, thanks for trying, Joe. Goodbye. You don't have to tell us, Al. We'll just wait and see what Richard accomplishes. Have some candy, Mrs. O'Reilly? Oh, thank you, Jeannie. This has been such a delightful trip. The professor's been so flattering. He keeps admiring me dress. Oh. <laughs> well, it is unusual. Thank you. It was my grandmother's wedding gown. <laughs> it's what they call colonial style. Yes, and there's room enough in the back for Benjamin Franklin to fly his kite. <laughs> Isn't he the kidder? When we were at the statue of George Washington, the guide said, this is the father of our country. And the professor pointed to me and said, meet his mother. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're all having fun. Especially you, Professor. Well, Janie, this trip is a blessing. Mrs. O'Reilly and I have never gotten along so well. You know, it's a funny thing. When I first saw Mrs. O'Reilly, I said... I wouldn't go near that old crow. And here I am, a bird fancier. <laughs> oh, Professor, you make me feel like a girl again. <laughs> How do you like that? In one minute, I knocked off a hundred years. <laughs> uh, seriously, Mrs. O'Reilly, the reason I'm getting to like you is because we see more eye to eye. Like when we visited Congress, you said the Republicans were saving this country. I said no such thing. I said the Democrats were saving it from the Republicans. Now, wait a minute. You mean to stand there and tell me that the Democrats ever had one man to compare with Dewey? Well, I don't think he should be president just because he once captured Manila. <laughs> Keep out of this, Irma. Mrs. O'Reilly, you mean I brought you down here all the way to Washington to find out you're a Democrat? And what's wrong with being a Democrat? I happen to know a few things about these matters. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Look, Mrs. O'Reilly, don't think you know everything about politics just because you helped Betsy Ross make the flag. <laughs> Why, you, you old broken-down fiddle player, you. Me you call broken-down? Why, Humpty Dumpty with six unions couldn't put you together again. <laughs> Why, you, you... Go, go ahead, say it. Goodness sakes, Edward, please, we'll be thrown out of the hotel. Well, she's not going to talk to me that way. I'm getting out of here. And so am I. And, Professor, if you ever, ever dare talk to me again, I'll... Oh, I'll split your ticket. <laughs> I'm going. Oh, please, all of you, please. And, oh. Jane. Richard, you're white. What's wrong? Look at this newspaper headline. Let me see it. 
Richard Rhinelander arrived in Washington to negotiate for purchase of a group of war surplus buildings. Oh, how awful. Oh, who could have... Well, the article is bylined by a New York reporter, Stanley Adams. Oh, what a coincidence. That's a nice young man who phoned me. <laughs> Irma. Oh, no. You didn't tell him Richard was coming to Washington. Well, I didn't say on what plane. Oh. <laughs> Chicken, I know you're the champ at messing things up, but what are you trying to do, make the Olympic team? <laughs> I, uh, I didn't mean anything. Oh, Irma, now the whole recreation project is ruined. Someone else will beat us to it. No, it's not my pride that matters. It's just all those kids. Oh. I don't know why you all have to pick on me. <laughs> Other people do things wrong. After all, this is Washington. <laughs> now, honey, there's no sense in crying over spilt milk. Go ahead, blame that on me, too. <laughs> Goodbye, all of you. I think I'd better go after her. If she ever gets in that Pentagon building, she'll be 60 years old before we find her. <laughs> Let, let her walk it off. She'll feel better. Well, I guess we can catch the next train. There's no sense in trying to see the senator now. Everyone picks on me. My best friends. Even Al. <laughs> Wait until the next time he wants a dance or a date, I'll say, listen, you, I'm through, and it won't do you any good to come crawling to me on your knees. Lady, can I help it if I'm short? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was talking to myself. What's this place? The Ford Theater. Oh, mister. Yes, miss? What's playing here? Playing. Madam, this is the Ford Theater. It's now a national museum. Here is where Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth. Now, would you like to go in? No, thank you. I'd rather wait until the picture changes. <laughs> Did you find her? No, and I've been all over. Oh. I went out to Mount Vernon. I think she might have been there because they said a blonde girl dropped in, said she wanted a pound of Martha Washington candy. <laughs> oh, Al, we've already missed our train. Shall we call the police? Don't like to do business with people out of town. <laughs> Let's wait. <laughs> What's the matter, lady? Are you lost? No. I just want to sit here and think about what I've done to those poor children. Well, how many children have you? Thousands. What? <laughs> and, and they're underprivileged. I, I mean, they're not mine. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> uh, pardon me, officer. Oh, good afternoon, Senator. I was sitting on the next bench. I couldn't help but overhear the young lady. Well, she doesn't make much sense to me. Maybe you better talk to her. Good day, Senator. Good day. Uh, <clears throat> may I sit down, miss? If you want to. Say, did that office call you, Senator? That's right. Well, what are you doing here? Why, well, I, I like it here. It's my only chance to get away from people who keep pestering me for their own selfish wants. Uh, have you ever been to Washington before, miss? No. What have you seen so far? Well, well, I saw the theater where Lincoln drove his Ford into a booth. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, what's the difference? Y you wouldn't like the picture. And then I went out to Mount Vernon. Yes? They don't have any candy. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Uh, oh, and I saw Washington's monument. Well, quite high, isn't it? Yes, I wonder how he got down when he finished it. Uh, just a moment, miss. Uh, I've uh, never run into anyone quite, uh, I mean, uh, uh, well, I uh, start slowly. Now, uh, where are you from? My home is in New York. 
Uh, I don't think I can give you my name or phone number because I'm going around with Al. Al? Yes. I'm angry at him. You see, I came down here with Richard Rhinelander about some underprivileged children. Richard Rhinelander? Yes, Senator. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you by your first name. <laughs> but, gosh, it, it's so nice of you to talk to me like this. <laughs> I miss my mother and father so. Well, are they dead? No, they're married. <laughs> well, I'd better be running along, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> Everybody. Oh, honey, for goodness sakes, where have you been? Oh, nowhere in particular, just killing time. Talking to a nice man. Oh, well, I'm relieved. We've been waiting for you. Well, come on, Richard, we're set. All right, let's go. Oh, that darn phone. Hello? Mr. Rhinelander? Yes? Uh, this is Senator McLean. Oh, oh, yes, Senator. Well, I I've been trying to reach you all day. Well, I thought it was another favor seeker, but now I know differently. I see your message here, and I want you to have those buildings for the Children's Recreation Center. Well, Senator, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. But to what do we owe this sudden decision? Well, I ran into a young lady who said she was a friend of yours, a blonde. A blonde? Well, hey, that must be Irma. I don't know how she got that way. <laughs> but uh, we must never let it happen to any other New York child. Name <laughs> is yours. Goodbye. I found Irma putting all our bars of swan soap in the sewing basket. Well, naturally, I was curious, so I said, why, honey? And Irma said... Well, you see, Jane, spring is coming. Maybe the swan wants to make a nest. <laughs> <laughs> well, Irma, you certainly take good care of your swan soap. And why not? Swan takes good care of you, too. Sure, swan likes nothing better than to give you a wonderful complexion care. And ladies, that's just what you get when you wash your face with Swan. Because Swan and Swan alone has that exclusive super creamed blend. Why, even the way a cake of Swan feels tells you it differs from other soaps. Swan has an extra smoothness you can actually feel in the cake itself. And when you smooth Swan's soft, creamy lather on your face, you can feel a difference in the lather, too. It feels richer, creamier. And then when you're through washing your face... Your mirror will show you what Swan Super Cream Blend does for your skin. It looks softer, smoother, younger. No wonder the Swan look is a young look. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy and starred Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Friends, we all know that the Red Cross has a bigger job to do than before the war. Did you know, for example, that today the program for veterans alone is nearly 12 times greater? For the armed forces, nearly five times greater? Well, those are a few of the facts, a few of the really serious problems the Red Cross must meet. Yes, this year the Red Cross needs $75 million to bring help and relief to millions of people. So please give generously. Frank Bingman speaking. Prime. Cakes are light and high. Prime. There's a reason why. Prime. Cakes improve with Spry. Rely on Spry. Yes, there's a reason why Spry makes grand cakes. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be sure of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake making success, try Spry, the pure all vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry. S P R Y. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.